What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to On Edge Talk. As usual, I'm your host, Patrick Hansi, joined tonight by the man, Sean Petrucci. How are we doing tonight, Sean? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Listen, I can't complain as usual. Um, we have a fun piece of news to talk about today. The Yankees made a trade. Not the trade that everybody was looking for. Uh, they acquired Tim LeCastro from the Arizona Diamondbacks. He's a fun little piece. We'll talk about him today. Um, but before we get into that, everyone, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Turn on post notifications for more. Like I always say, we're going live before and after every single Yankees game this season. So stay tuned for that content. But back to Tim LeCastro here. I mean, he's one of those kind of underrated pieces across the league. Um, he has a, a skill set. That the Yankees could use, I guess, if you want to say that. Um, if we're kind of looking at his stats from the past couple of years, 2021 hasn't been too generous to Tim LeCastro um, as a part of the, the Arizona Diamondbacks. In 55 games, he's batting 178 with a 271 on base, 491 OPS. But if you look in years past, he hasn't been as bad. 290 uh, batting average in 2020, 395 on base. And then in uh, 2019, in 91 games, uh, he batted 250 with 357 on base, 697 OPS. Uh, the Yankees did make this trade with the Diamondbacks to acquire him. I believe they just gave up like a double A arm or whatnot. Probably going to turn it into an absolute yeah, stud. Probably DNAs. Yeah, based on the Yankees' luck. But I think kind of evaluating the trade and kind of looking at the social media reaction to it, fans are kind of split 50 50, right? Because it came at such awkward timing, especially right after the House Steinbrenner press conference yeah, right. where. He kind of just said that he was willing to maybe go over the luxury tax, depending on the situation. But then five minutes later, we see the Yankees trade for some budget guy in Tim LeCastro. Um, the way I kind of view him, Sean, is it's essentially just a right-handed version of Tyler Wade who has the potential to be a little bit better with the bat, but we haven't seen that so far this season, right? Yeah. My initial reaction is impulsive just to be like, oh, what are you doing? Like, this isn't necessary. Like, how does this help us? But before you really – give this trade a grade, you got to wait and see what happens at the deadline. Like sure. if this is like one of the only moves it makes, then you can just ridicule it to no end. But if this is like a little warm up piece and then make some more moves, then I'm okay with this trade, but I'm not okay with it. If they're him and Tyler Wade are both on the roster. Cause like it's, Bro, it, it makes no, no sense. sense. No, but it also makes like, no sense at all. You know what this kind of reminds me of, and I know it's going to remind you of this as well. The Rook Neto door trade, bro. If it, it's the same exact theory because I'm kind of like, well, you acquire Rugnet Odor, but I feel like we had a very similar guy already in Derek Dietrich that you could have just used. So now I'm kind of viewing the, the, this uh, this Tim LeCastro trade the same way. Like, I feel like you already have him in Tyler Wade. And also, the, the part of the trade that pisses me off, and it pissed me off originally when I first found out about the deal, that this essentially blocks two of the Yankees' young stars in AAA that we talk about all the time that deserve a major league call-up, and that's Hoy John Park and Trey Ambergy. Trey Ambergy is batting like 350 in AAA, having an absolute career year. I believe he's like 26 or 27 at this point mm -hmm. and is deserving of a major league call-up. Now, I don't know if the Yankees are planning on putting Tim LeCastro on the major league roster. I'm assuming they are. I couldn't imagine why they why they would trade for him and just throw him in the minors. But uh, I feel like that this just bothers me so much because it does block a guy like Ambergy, who was already blocked at the major league level mm -hmm. with Brett Gardner and Clint Frazier. And now this mm -hmm. just provides a, another roadblock in his past path to the major leagues. So, if you're kind of just going to replace him with Tim LeCastro at this point, just, just bro deal him to like the Orioles and let him get like an everyday opportunity somewhere. I was going to say my initial thoughts with those two guys, not to get too off topic of LeCastro, but it's like, it's almost, they want to wait until after the deadline, like keep having those guys rise their stocks in triple a. And then if they can make a deal for him, they'll do it. And then if not, then maybe they'll call him up afterwards. You know, you want to call up a guy and have their stock plummet at the major league level. So I guess that makes but sense on that point, but. I just don't – I can't see where LaCastro fits here besides being off the bench, but who do you send down? And if you're just going to no. be a triple-A guy, then depth, I guess. I, yeah. Not it, a bad it's, thing. It's so strange to me simply because, like, it seems like – let's say LaCastro is going to be, like, a staple on the Major League roster right now, right? I'm assuming Tyler Wade has to be gone has because to. I'm LaCastro plays infield and outfield, I believe, so it gives the Yankees a little bit more vers versatility in that sense. But also at the same time, it's like – if you find a way to make a roster spot for Tim LeCastro, why couldn't you find a way, way to make a roster spot for anyone else who's raking in the minor leagues that deserve an opportunity? And I think it says a lot when you look at Brian Cashman's comments the other day. He's like, well, we're just going to let those guys play down there. But you have guys already in the organization. And the same exact thing happened when they acquired Rude Neto Dor. You have guys in the organization who have the potential to put up that kind of production. But then you go out and you trade for some random guy off, off a team anyway. And I'm not even trying to discredit Tim LeCastro because he has the potential to be a solid piece for the Yankees. But I just don't think that there was any need for him right now. If the Yankees were going to go out and acquire an outfielder, it had to be like a top-level talent. Because 
we heard uh, we heard rumblings a few months ago of the Yankees being interested in Delano DeShields Jr. And I consider this equivalent to trading for Delano DeShields Jr. It's not a significant upgrade. It's just kind of a piece to throw a wrench in any plans of any minor leaguer who kind of earned an opportunity to come up, right? Yeah, it's just that's that's why I said before it's like the only logical explanation for keeping these guys down there is to keep their value high. Because, but then again, that makes no sense. Like, if the Yankees were like 20 games over 500, it's like you want to keep those guys down there, you yeah. don't want to ruin anything, fine. But the Yankees need help now more than ever. And we know how cheap they are. Why wouldn't you bring up guys that will cost you literally nothing? Yeah. That could help right away. And you don't and even also, need the trade deadline necessarily if these guys come up and they produce. Yeah. And also, like, kind of the way I'm looking at it is if the Yankees did acquire LeCastro to kind of be their everyday center fielder, I'd be okay with it. Right. But that's just not the case because, you know, every single day we're going to see Brett Gardner trotting out there in, in center field. So it's not like you're even improving anything with this trade. You're you're genuinely not. And I just bro, it's mind boggling to me. Now, I'm not trying to discredit Tim LeCastro no. because he is one of the, the fastest players in baseball, Um, but he's also kind of kind of. Yeah, he's a weapon, but also at the same time mentioning his speed and that that's kind of his main uh skill in his tool belt the yankees never utilize stolen bases so i don't understand maybe this is going to change if le Castro's on the team but at the same time if this isn't a part of their strategy right now what makes us think that just by inserting le Castro into this team that the yankees are going to start stealing bases and actually know how to run the bases now yeah and i'm okay with it being like if that's what they want him for come off the bench pinch run start it every couple days that's okay but if he's going to be your new center fielder or split time with brett gardner then, then what, like, what are they doing? Because like, that's not how you win games. You don't go out and get guys that are underperforming and just platoon them and hope that one of them catches fire. If the Yankees yeah, are serious about winning, then they're going to make a serious deal in the next month. And if they 100%. don't, then they're just throwing the towel in. 100%. And we're going to look back and say, okay, we traded for Rudin and Odor. How'd that work out? Yeah, I'm I'm just so confused. Um, the the trade itself is a little bit confusing. Now I understand. Uh, the internet loves Tim LaCastro. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is, but you go on Twitter, you have like. 90% of the Yankees fan base kind of gushing over him. Um, but then on the flip side, you also have some people who are kind of like, well, I guess he could be like an interesting piece for this team, but also at the same time, like the Yankees still need so much more. They need a like, lot so much more, more than Tim Castro. And I think like you could have taken the piece that you dealt for, for Tim Castro. Maybe you could have put that towards a deal of someone who's actually worth some sort of value. I don't understand what they're doing. I think for me, the only thing that also bothers me about this deal as well, I hate to be such a pessimist about this deal, but it, it's almost impossible to be optimistic it's, about it, anything yeah, involving is. the Yankees right now. But I mean, the thing that kind of bothers me so much is like, bro, I just don't know where we go from here. And that, that's that's kind of like the, the main point that I'm trying to make. I, I don't know what, what the direction is for the future. I don't know if if this is just another example of the Yankees trying to dig in the bargain bin and it see is. if like they could just steal another hidden gem that just works out. And they're like, well, we just found the next Mike. We found our next uh, Luke Voigt and he's going to be like a 40 home run yeah. hitter for us. And we gave up nothing for him. This is an, this is essentially another one of those positions where the Yankees are just going to try to outsmart everyone else in the league and prove they're so much smarter than everyone else. It's going to, it's going to end up backfiring probably. Yeah. And I don't, I know how Steinbrenner said, like, if I see the need to go over the tax, I will certainly consider it. But that means nothing. Yeah, that I means agree. absolutely nothing. That means they're going to do their due, gil- due diligence. They're going to call all these teams, but all these stars, the prices are going to be too high. We're going to hold on to these guys instead of trading them away for stars now. It's just like an endless cycle of this, it's an endless yeah. cycle of unnecessary trades and not going after the big piece. Listen, hopefully the Yankees do go after that big piece, but if they don't, I'm going to look back at this Tim LaCastro trade and just punch myself in the face, honestly, <laughs> because it's just sickening that if this is their main piece that they're acquiring at this year's trade deadline season, I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be visibly nauseous next time you guys see me go live. But with that being said, that is going to wrap things up for today's episode. Um, Listen, I think the bottom line is Tim LaCastro is a cute little piece. However, he's not that game-changing piece that the Yankees need, and I still think that they need, they need to make much more improvements moving forward, and hopefully this doesn't block some of their minor league talent from getting opportunities, even though it probably will. But uh, with that being said, appreciate you all for stopping by. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications for more. Like I always say, we're going live before and after every single Yankees game this season, so stay tuned for that content. But you guys know the deal. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. Let's go, Yankees. Peace.